The Pennsylvania Game is made possible in part by... The Pennsylvania Public Television Network. Hardman Phillips was a British subject who never became an American citizen because he believed the United States government was doomed to fail. In 1821, he built a factory at Point Lookout, a suburb of Phillipsburg, and became the first to manufacture a certain product in the United States. What was it? A, cigars, B, glue, C, screws, or D, household scissors. The answer is C, screws. Hardman Phillips built his celebrated screw factory on Moshannon Creek at the lower end of Phillipsburg in 1821. The mill was in operation for 15 years. At the height of production, 1,000 screws were produced there each week. Some scoundrel reportedly burnt the factory down in 1859. Today, the only sign that the factory once existed is a stone monument erected at the mill site by the Moshannon chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution and two screws, which are preserved at the Phillipsburg Historical Foundation. Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane astounded the world and made medical history in 1921 when he removed his own appendix at age 60. Dr. Kane conducted other unusual surgical procedures. Did he A, sterilize all his surgical equipment with holy water, B, sing while performing surgeries, C, sign his surgeries, or D, meditate before his surgeries becoming one with his equipment? The answer is C, sign his surgeries. Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane is well known for performing self-surgery. He removed his own appendix, performed his own hernia operation, and even amputated one of his own fingers. In 1925, he began leaving his mark at all his surgeries by signing his patients with India ink. To do this, he placed some ink on the patient's skin and made two slight scratches and a dot with the ink before it dried. This represented the letter K in the radio code alphabet, and thus Kane had left his signature. While performing surgery on himself with the aid of mirrors, Kane was very relaxed, propped up on pillows, and surrounded by nurses. He was confident that nothing could go wrong, but 12 weeks later after he performed his own hernia operation at the age of 70, Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane died of pneumonia. In 1864, Joseph Binney established the Peekskill Chemical Company in Peekskill, New York. The company packaged and distributed hardwood charcoal and produced a substance called lampblack, a black pigment. Today, the company is located in Pennsylvania and is known as Binney & Smith. Does Binney & Smith manufacture A, macadam and tar products, B, photocopy and fax machines, C, crayons and other kids' products, or D, circus and theatrical makeup. The answer is C, crayons and other kids' products. In 1900, the newly formed Binney and Smith Company bought a water-powered stone mill along Bushkill Creek near Easton. It was an ideal location because of the nearby slate quarries used in making their slate pencils. In 1903, the company made its first box of crayons Benny's wife, Alice, named the crayons Crayola by joining the French word cray, which means chalk, with ola, meaning oily. An appropriate name since the crayons, originally sold with eight colors to a box, are made mostly of paraffin wax, an oil derivative. Today, the biggest box of Crayola brand crayons holds 96 colors. Of course, many more colors have been created over the years. Periodically, some are retired to the Crayola Hall of Fame, or renamed. A century ago, the thought that America would forget Herman Webster Mudgett, also known as Dr. H. H. Holmes, was preposterous. His death in Philadelphia in 1896 was front page news across the country. Was Herman Webster Mudgett A, assassinated by German agents for spying on France, B, the first identified serial killer in the United States, see a chemist who developed an effective treatment for TB, or D, America's first poet laureate.
The answer is B, the first identified serial killer in the United States. Herman Webster Mudgett, also known as Dr. H.H. H. Holmes, was a swindler, bigamist, horse thief, and pharmacist. He was also a sadistic killer who died at the end of a hangman's noose in 1896 in a gala public event in Philadelphia's Moyamensing prison. His 100-room Chicago mansion, dubbed the Castle of Horror, was a maze of trap doors and trick hallways where authorities believe hundreds of people were murdered. I was born with the devil in me, Holmes often said. He is buried at Holy Cross Cemetery in Yadin, Pennsylvania. Holmes left specific burial instructions. His body was laid out in a pine box and filled with cement. The coffin was buried 10 feet deep and then covered with another layer of cement. Holmes wanted to prevent scientists from digging up his corpse to study his brain. Linnaeus, the father of botany, called John Bartram the greatest natural botanist in the world. Bartram was the first in America to travel through the colonies seeking samples for classifications. His travels brought to light such discoveries as the spice sassafras, the tulip tree, and the American lotus, to name just a few. Which of the following cannot be attributed to John Bartram? A, he discovered the Franklin tree. B, he published America's first printed plant catalog. C, he was the first to identify the poison ivies. Or D, he was the official botanist to King George III. The answer is C. John Bartram was not the first to identify the poison ivies, but he did discover the Franklin tree, which he named in honor of his friend, Ben Franklin. Discovered in Georgia, Bartram brought the tropical-looking tree back to Philadelphia. Unfortunately, the Franklin tree was never again found growing in the wild. Of the few Franklins that are growing today, all have been propagated from cuttings taken from the original tree Bartram found well over 200 years ago. As the king's botanist in America, he introduced about 500 new species of plants from the New World to the Old World. Bartram and his son William published the nation's first plant catalog. Bartram's botanical garden, the first of its kind in America, is one of Philadelphia's major tourist attractions. The town of Pigeon located in northwestern Pennsylvania, received its name because it was a major nesting site for passenger pigeons up until the late 1800s. The town, however, has long outlived its namesake, which became extinct in 1914. What caused the passenger pigeons' extinction? A, farmers poisoned passenger pigeons to protect their crops. B, pigeon feather hats and jackets were the fashion craze of the 1800s. C, Passenger pigeons were commercially hunted for their meat. Or D, a parasitic mite prevented passenger pigeons from laying eggs. The answer is C. Passenger pigeons were indiscriminately slaughtered for their meat. Some naturalists contend that the main cause of the bird's extinction was the destruction of the food supply due to clear cutting but most agree that the combination of overhunting and logging led to the bird's extermination. In the early 1800s, the passenger pigeon was the most numerous species of bird on Earth, containing more individuals than all North American birds combined. A single flock could contain over two billion birds. Their nesting colonies, which were mainly in large forests, were sometimes 40 miles in length. Tree branches often broke under their great weight, the large numbers and breeding habits of passenger pigeons made them easy prey for commercial hunters. Guns, clubs, nets, and smoke bombs were used to capture large numbers of passenger pigeons, which were then packed in barrels and sent to market. Billions of passenger pigeons were killed each year. By 1880, only a few thousand remained. By 1900, only one or two were seen in the wild. The very last passenger pigeon died in captivity in 1914. Author-illustrator Mark Brown grew up near Erie, Pennsylvania. His popular children's book spawned a TV show hailed as one of the 10 best series of the 90s. Is it A, Blue's Clues, B, The Simpsons, C, South Park, or D, Arthur? The answer is D, Arthur. 
Mark Brown recalls the stories his grandmother told him as a child in Mill Creek, near Erie. Brown later made up bedtime stories for his own children. A tale about an aardvark named Arthur became a family favorite and the simple family ritual a full-time profession. The one-time truck driver, short order cook, and television art director trained at the Cleveland Art Institute and went on to create more than 100 picture books for children. Inspiration for Arthur and his friends come from people Brown knew growing up in Pennsylvania, and background illustrations often reference Pennsylvania towns. In Arthur's Baby, for example, presents for the baby came from Duncansville and Hollidaysburg. Brown's best-selling books led to the hit PBS Kids Show, which TV critics called one of the 10 best series of the 90s. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.